one of the main ways that I use to pull everywhere in class is to, at the beginning of class, focus the students or workshop participants on a particular topic that I would like to discuss. In this case, when I was giving this workshop, the topic was using cell phones to gather data and assess students in class. And workshop participants found that it was both exciting and scary. When you download a poll from Poll Everywhere, you automatically will get a set of instruction slides that include these examples on how to vote via texting, where you text the code via poll4.com online or using Twitter. I found that once students have seen these slides once and participated in a poll or two, they've got the hang of it and there's no need to repeatedly slow show these slides in class. I initially intended to use Poll Everywhere to gauge participation, take attendance occasionally, and do short quizzes. I quickly added data collection and instruction comprehension, as well as in my opinion, the more fun and more effective uses of silly surveys, discussion, concept application, experiments, reflection, and anticipation. Note that the ones in green were not always used around class content, and I'll tell you what I mean. Using it for participation or attendance, what answer they give is not so important as whether or not they answer. So in this case, any answer is correct. Did Dr. Mason talk to our group? about the study guide? Yes. If you're here and you see the poll and know to respond, then the answer is yes, no matter how you say it. Literally. The key with this type of poll is to start it, leave it open for a minute or two for students in class to respond, and then to stop it so that they don't have time to text friends outside of class and let them know that there is an attendance poll. So stopping this one becomes the key. For quizzing, I used it three different ways. The first was to give them some data and ask them to analyze it and send their answer to a poll that I already had set up. Their answers will then come in, but they won't be able to see them on the screen. They will see the previous slide, which has the data they're supposed to analyze. A second way is to ask an open-ended question. And again, I used a separate slide so that they couldn't see the answers as they came in. But then when reviewing the quiz answers as a class, you can go back and they can see anonymously how people answered differently in the class, different ideas or alternative solutions that students proposed. In addition, you can use it for multiple choice. Now when they're answering, you may want to hide the answers. And when they see this when the poll is open, there will be a number right here, which is the number that corresponds to choosing that answer of their choices. But then when reviewing the quiz, you can show, look, three quarters of you got the correct answer. And you can talk about why that's the correct answer and why the other choices chosen by the class were incorrect. And it's all anonymous from the point of view of the students. Lessons learned from quizzing in class, number the questions, and tell them the total number. They need to see the end coming or they get overwhelmed. Time the responses. 60 to 90 seconds is about all they should need. This is not a deep application assessment tool. This is a quick comprehension assessment type of tool. So if they've done the reading or if they've been paying attention in class, they should be able to read the question and choose an answer within a minute or a minute and a half. It's really unfair to the students who have done their work to have to sit five minutes per question waiting for students who didn't do their work to guess and to be satisfied with their guess. You can also limit the number of responses so that students can't send in multiple guesses and their first answer is the only answer they get. Keep the quiz short. Six questions I found is about the ideal length. Four to six questions gets the job done. Beyond six questions, it just becomes pretty tedious for everyone, including the professor. You can download 
quiz answers, and I have them separated by quiz, and go through really quickly and see if E is the correct answer. Just highlight any answer that's not E, for instance. This is how I did it, just an example. If one question has a lot of wrong answers, such as this one in column F, I may consider throwing out that question. And these results are from a preliminary phase where I was still learning how to write questions appropriate to pull everywhere. So I did throw out some questions, and you'll have that experience, I'm sure. You can also download all poll responses by one participant and look at per question if they answered or not. And in this case, this participant was having some cell phone troubles where her battery kept dying and her responses were not getting registered with Pull Everywhere, so we were able to troubleshoot that and fix it. Another way I used the poll was for data collection. And in this case, they had to participate in a reflection project, and they had to sign up for which one they wanted to do. So this is the mix of the class, which wasn't so much relevant as the report that I could download, that then I sorted by column C their answers and was easily able to find out who was in which group. Instruction comprehension is great when you want to later be able to hold them accountable for specific instructions given in class. In this case, they were reviewing their midterm, and I wanted them back. So, correct answers were both no and only if you want a score of zero, because my threat was, these aren't in the gradebook yet, and if you don't give it back, you won't get a score. And later, should a student have taken an exam home with him or her, I would be able to pull their responses from Pull Everywhere and say, look, you understood that you weren't allowed to take it with you. What's going on? Fortunately, no one took it, and they all understood. Silly surveys can be a great icebreaker. I use this one at the very beginning of class and let them kind of laugh at who liked what type of cookie. Um, they also are a great way to focus energy on external events for a moment acknowledge that something is going on that they're all really interested in, and then steer them back towards class content. This question was at the end of a quiz on the day that Prince William and Catherine got married. Kind of acknowledge that the event was going on, let them sort of giggle about it for a minute, and then we got to work. I loved using Poll Everywhere for discussions. In this case, their assignment was to bring in a news article related to irrational behavior. I can watch these come in. They can see them come in on the screen and see what their classmates read about. I often had them discuss in small groups, and then I would pick a few from the list and we'd discuss them as a class, or sometimes I would let them volunteer. In particular, this one, the headmaster banned James Tate from prom. This one right here became a heated class discussion, so I then created a follow-up question about it where I asked them to take a side, and as a class they sided with Rally for Change, and this later became a midterm question on the topic of irrational behavior as well. A different example, less conceptual, more concrete, was their international trade article topic. Again, they got to see as a class the responses coming in. We discussed several different ones as a class, one of which was the issue in Cuba of lower world prices for unroasted coffee, but a price ceiling on roasted coffee. And this became not only a quiz question, which you see here, but also an application question on a midterm as well. And a different way of doing it is another type of open-ended question, asking them how they participated in international trade, which makes them think back over their actions, and then they can see how each other interpreted the question as well. They really enjoy reading each other's answers from the open-ended questions. Makes good discussion. I also used it for classroom experiments, such as this one, the ultimatum game. 
where the class was split into pairs and one was the allocator and one was the recipient. I then had a poll for each. For the allocator, I asked them how much they kept and you can see the different responses. And for the recipients, I asked them if they accepted the offer or not. And then we talked about why or why not. This is a good way to do a quick experiment where the overall result matters more than the individual data, although you can still download individual data as well. I use it for reflection at a time of high stress, such as after midterm, sort of to bring back a positive attitude to the class, just gave them a minute to think about something positive. I also used it for anticipation. This one happened to be on the last day of class, and they were excited and hyper and having trouble focusing. It was a really sunny day. And so we took a moment. We shared as a class through the poll, which was actually quite efficient, very quick, what they were excited about, and then wrapped it up and said, all right, now it's time to get to work. We have a class to do. So it's a great way of channeling that energy acknowledging what they're excited or buzzing about, but then getting back to course content. So I've shown you reports. However, let's go to my polls. I'll show you how to pull a report. It's very user friendly. You simply select which polls you would like and you click report. You can decide if you want to be shown or not and you can also show the time received if you would like to know if the responses were received in class or not. If you want to double check, for instance, if you forgot to stop a poll or something like that. And then you download it as a spreadsheet, which I've shown you. You can also do it on the report page by going down individually and clicking Add to Report. It's not quite as quick as the other way. And this is obviously a list of all polls that I've created under my account. If I want to use them in class, I simply check the ones and click Download as a PowerPoint. Also, this is where you can stop a poll or start it. The program that I used is the $15 a month, which allows me to identify the participants, so I required students to register, and you can have up to 50. There are obviously many plan choices, so you have to decide the costs and benefits of each appropriate to your situation. And last but not least, how easy is it to create a poll? It's as easy as that. Thank you. Please contact me if you have any questions. I may or may not be able to answer them.